Hello everyone. In this episode, I'm going to show that uh, Nash bargaining rule actually satisfies Pareto optimality. So how do we show it uh, formally? Uh, let's first re remember the definition of Nash rule and the Pareto optimality. Well, if you remember the notation we used for the Nash rule is NSD. So for any given bargaining problem, SD, which is an element of the script B, which is the set of all uh, bargaining problems between N negotiators. Well, it's equal to the argmax. Uh, well, X is coming from uh, individually rational uh, payoff vectors, a set of uh, uh, individually rational payoffs. And it basically maximizes uh, this multiplication. So x1 minus d1 times, x2 minus d2 times, all the way up to xn minus dn, okay? So a rule f, any rule, a bargaining rule, is pretty optimal if you remember, if the rule is actually one of the pretty optimal uh, payoff vectors. Well, the PSD, the set, the pretty optimal, the set of pretty optimal um, uh, payoffs for the bargaining game SD is defined by the following set. So it has to be an element of the payoff, a feasible payoff. And if there exists some Y, vector Y, which basically gives everybody at least as high as the uh, vector X, but of course it should be strictly higher, at least for some negotiators, well then Y shouldn't be in S, right? So uh, you can't make um, you know, some individuals, some negotiators better off without hurting uh, anybody else. All right, so that's basically the idea of pretty optimality. So we're going to show that this set, I'm sorry, this rule, the, the Nash rule, actually satisfies pretty optimality. So how do we prove that? Uh, well, probably the easiest way is to prove by contradiction. So suppose for a contradiction, uh, for a contradiction, the Nash rule is not pretty optimal. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means there exists some bargaining problem, all right? Some, I don't know what its shape looks like, but it's definitely in this set of bargaining problems. Uh, remember, it has to be a convex, it has to be closed, it has to be bounded, and, 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 and D, there's at least one more alternative strictly higher than D, etc. So for any of the, there exists some bargaining problem, okay, um, such that the Nash solution is not in this set. So the Nash solution, uh, SD, is not in the set, P of SD, okay? Um, again, suppose for contradiction, this is true. Well, what does that mean? Uh, let's try to open this up. While the Nash solution is not pretty optimal, it means the following. Well, first of all, what does that mean? That means the Nash solution is, is a vector of, uh, a, a payoff vector, right? Let's denote it as x star. It's something like x1 star, x2 star, all the way up to xn star, okay? So it is an element or here, by the way, you may wonder, uh, do we have a uniqueness of Nash solution? Well, yes, uh, it is unique. So let's say X star is the Nash solution. So what does that mean? Remember, it's the argument that maximizes this multiplication. What does that mean? That means, well, first of all, X star is in this set, so it's individually rational. Okay, I don't know if we're gonna use it, but I'm just rewriting everything. I'm just opening up the definitions. What else? It maximizes, it is the argument that maximizes this multiplication, which basically means uh, i from one to n, xi star minus di, this multiplication is greater than or equal to i from one to n, xi minus di, and this is true for all x, where x is again a vector, in isd. Right? This is exactly what that means. So the Nash bargaining solution basically maximizes this multiplication 
uh, over the individual instead of individual rational payoffs. So therefore, that when I multiply, oh, I'm sorry, when I calculate this multiplication with x star, and when I calculate this with some other x, well, you know what? The value for x star uh, is going to be higher than or equal to the value that the other guys are going to give. Well, because this is a unique solution, the Nash is a unique solution, it's going to be strictly higher, but let's leave it as, as is. Okay? Well, okay. What else? So this is what x star is, is a Nash solution means. Now I'm going to say, remember, this is what I assumed. So x star is not in this set. So now what does that mean? Okay, so x star is not an element of the set of Perot uh, optimal payoff vectors, means the following. Now I'm going to use the definition of this set. So what is the definition? Well, it basically says the following. If x star was in the set, it would mean that any y greater than or equal to x uh, should be outside of s. Well, however, x star is not in this set, so that means there exists some y which is in S, okay, which is in S, um, such that y is greater than or equal to x. Don't forget, y is a vector with n component, x is a vector with n component, so y greater than x means yi greater than or equal to xi for every i, and there should be at least one i, or j, let's call it, yi strictly higher than, oops, xj, for some j in n. Okay? All right, so once again, x star, um, so this is x star, I'm sorry. So x star is not a Pareto optimal allocation, um, payoff vector, that means, there exists some other uh, payoff vector in the set S in our bargaining uh, problem such that Y gives uh, all agents higher payoff. Um, some may be the same, but nobody gets worse off. Okay? Huh. So now let's use this. What does that mean? That means, look, Y is in S, right? And it's greater than X star. Huh. So y is a vector which gives each individual higher payoff. Some exactly the same, but at least one or two agents are getting strictly higher payoff. All right. Well, then if I multiply, um, you know, this yi minus di, and then, I'm sorry, when I subtract each yi from di and then multiply it over i's, this multiplication, is this going to be greater than or equal to this multiplication, i from 1 to n, xi star minus di? Yes, it should be, it must be. I mean, I believe this is clear, right? yi is either equal to xi or greater. di is the same on both sides. Well, so, Every component of y weakly beats x. And so therefore the multiplication, this multiplication, should be greater than or equal to this. Okay? Huh. So I have a problem. How so? Well, remember, x star was the solution of the Nash bargaining problem. Right? So x star, the, this multiplication, when I do it for x star, was actually giving us the highest payoff out of all the x's, all the payoff vectors in i of st. And yet, I found another payoff vector which gives higher payoff than x star. Huh. Well, there's one problem. Well, maybe this y is not an individual irrational payoff. Right? Because remember, uh, x star has to be an individual irrational payoff. Can I say that y is also individual irrational payoff? Huh. Well, all I can say, y is a feasible payoff. It's in s. But you know what? Because y is greater than or equal to x star, and x star is an individual irrational, what does that mean? That means x star is greater than or equal to d vector, right? This is by definition. So therefore, 
if y is greater than or equal to x star, which we know is greater than or equal to d, so therefore y is also greater than or equal to d, which means y is also, in fact, individually rational. Hmm. So there exists this y, which is individually rational, payoff vector, and, in fact, y is arg max, uh, you know, x in... Uh, I S D pi I from one to N uh, X I minus D I. Okay. Well, okay. So here's one problem. Um, this is nothing but Nash bargaining solution, right? So it's Y. Uh, well, but remember we said the Nash bargaining solution is X star. All right. Um, so this is what we assumed at the very beginning. And now we came up with this, y is also equal to. Huh. So can it be possible? Well, it's possible if n has multiple values, right? I mean, maybe, so it's not equal to, so maybe x star is an element of this and y is also element of this, okay? But um, you can take this as given. Um, the Nash solution is unique, all right? So therefore, uh, this can only be the case if y is equal to x star. Okay, but how do I get a contradiction? Well, y cannot be equal to x star. Why is that? Well, because remember, we use the notion, uh, the, the uh, assumption for contradiction that x star is not pre-optimal uh, payoff vector. And so there was y, which is different than x star. This inequality implies that x star and y are two different vectors. How come? Well, I mean, that's the definition of vector greater than or equal to means, okay? If y is exactly equal to x star, okay? So if y is exactly equal to x star, it then does not contradict with predoptimality. For predoptimality, all right, y has to be greater than or equal to x, and y must be different than x, all right? So there's another allocation where, uh, you know, some individuals get better off and nobody gets worse off. That's the idea about some other. So y is another um, payoff vector than x star. So therefore, y and x star are not equal, which basically comes from this, which comes from the assumption that the Nash solution is not pre-optimal. Uh, so you know what? We got a contradiction. Because y cannot be equal to x star, this contradicts. Well, but this contradiction comes from the assumption that Nash solution is not pre-optimal. So therefore, hence, Nash solution is equal to PSD, the set of part optimal allocations. Okay? And again, this has to be true because we did not make any specific assumption about what this bargaining set S and the disagreement point D look like. All right? So all the arguments will hold for any S and D. So this is exactly how we prove that the Nash solution is in fact part optimal. Okay? I hope that was clear.